Okay. Okay. Uh, very good afternoon, my dear friends. Uh, welcome to the session. This is Dr. Padala Tirupati from Government Degree College from Jagitya. Today's our eminent resource person, uh, Srimati uh, B. Rukmini Devi Madam Garu, Assistant Professor, Department of Botany, uh, GDC Narsapur, Medak District. Uh, Madam has a huge experience in this uh, in the field of botany at the same time plant sciences. Uh, Madam, please welcome, hearty welcome and uh, start your session and please uh, share your screen also. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Padal Tirupati, sir, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much, sir. Shall I start, sir? Yes, madam. Yes. Uh, please share your screen. Okay, sir. Shall I? Madam, please proceed. Okay, sir. Good afternoon, sir, and my dear students. This is B. Rukmini Devi, Assistant Professor of Botany, working in Government Degree College, Narsapur, Madhya District. Today, I would like to explain about the economic importance of fungi. So, first of all, I would like to tell you about the definition of fungi before entering into our topic. How can you explain? Or how can you define fungi? What are fungi? Fungi are thallophytes. Thallophytes means uh, plant bodies in the form of a thallus. What kind of thallophytes these are? These are echlorophyllous thallophytes. Echlorophyllous thallophytes means uh, here there is no chlorophyll in this uh, plant body. So that is why fungi are defined as uh, echlorophyllous thallophytes. These are eukaryotic organisms having two nucleus that is why these are called as a eukaryotic organisms in this fungi thallus is ranges from unicellular structures to filamentous structures for unicellular structures examples are yeast all of you know very uh, well about this yeast scientific name of yeast i think all of you know that is saccharomyces cerevisiae so this is example for unicellular fungus like that some multicellular forms also present in this fungi. So thallus is ranges from unicellular yeast to multicellular filamentous molds. Here in this topic, economic importance of fungi, we will discuss two aspects. One is the beneficial aspects of fungi. Next one is the harmful aspects of fungi. In what way these fungi are useful to human beings and in what way these are harmful to human beings, we will, we will discuss in today's session. First, we will discuss about the beneficial aspects of fungi. Beneficial aspects means in what way these fungal forms are useful to human beings, plants, and other organisms we will discuss. So, in this again, we will classify these beneficial aspects under various subheadings. First, we will discuss about fungi used as a source of food. Okay. In this edible fungi, we will discuss first. Edible fungi means first and foremost thing we will uh, remember about this mushrooms. Okay, what are mushrooms? Mushrooms are some fruiting bodies which are produced by some Basidiomyces fungi and some Ascomyces fungi. These are nothing but fruiting bodies. These are fleshy in nature. These are edible. So that is why we will consume this edible fruiting bodies as a food. So first we will discuss about fungi as a source of food. So first of all we will discuss about some important fungi. The two edible fungi we will discuss. What are the scientific names of this edible fungi? What are the common names of this edible fungi we will discuss. These are very very important for competitive exams. Some mushrooms are edible. Some other mushrooms are poisonous. So we must be very cautious while uh, consuming these uh, mushrooms. Here I will mention some important uh, edible mushrooms uh, names. First one, Agaricus bisporus, which is commonly called as button mushroom. Next one, Agaricus campestris. Co common name of this Agaricus campestris is uh, field mushroom. Next one, Pleurotus astriatus. 
This is commonly known as a oyster mushroom. Next one, Calocybe indica. This is commonly called as a milky mushroom. Next, Vulvariella species. Scientific name is Vulvariella vulvaceae. This is commonly called as a paddy straw mushroom. Next, some other edible mushrooms are commonly called as morels and truffles. Morels scientific name is Morchella asculenta. Next, truffles scientific name is Tuber melanosporum. In addition to these common edible mushrooms, one important mushroom which is uh, preferred by so many people because of its uh, nutrient values that edible mushroom name is shitek mushroom. That shitek mushroom scientific name is Lentinula edodes. That is the scientific name of shitek mushroom. This is costliest mushroom also. Here you can see the images of different types of edible mushrooms. First one is Agaricus bisporus. Second one is field mushroom, commonly called as Agaricus campestris. Next one, oyster mushroom. Fourth one is Caloseb indica, common name is milky mushroom. Here you can see paddy straw mushrooms, morels also in these images. Here you can see shitek mushroom as well as black truffle. Next coming to yeast. These are having great economic value. Some important yeast species and their uses we will discuss. Why these yeasts are having so much of economic importance we will discuss first. Yeast scientific name as we have discussed earlier. Okay, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. This is commonly called as Bacchus yeast or Brewer's yeast. Why these yeasts are considered as important sources of food material means because of high amount of proteins and vitamins. Yeast comprises vitamins D and B complex. In addition to this, they consist of high amount of proteins. Because of this reason, these are used extensively in uh, baking industry as well as brewing industry. Yeast have health promoting effect. Why these are having health promoting effect? Because of the rich source of vitamins which are present in this yeast. Next, yeast are also used to leaven bread and dough, which is used in, in the preparation of various food items. So, for leavening of the dough, which is used in making of bread, these yeasts are used. Next, we will discuss about fungi, which are used as a single cell proteins. Single cell proteins are nothing but dried biomass of some important fungi. Okay, this dried biomass of some important fungi consumed as a protein source. So, because of high nutrient values which are present in this single cell proteins or fungal species, we will consume these as a supplement to proteins. So, what kind of fungal species? are used in the production of single cell proteins means Saccharomyces cerevisiae, Candida utilis, Torilopsis species, etc. These are the some important fungal species which are used in the production of a single cell protein. As we have discussed earlier, single cell proteins are nothing but a dried biomass of some important fungal species. These are having high amount of proteins because of this high amounts of proteins. These are consumed as a supplement to proteins. One substance which is commonly used as a meat substitute, that substance name is corn, which is a product of a mycoprotein, okay, which is actually derived from the fungus Fusarium veninatum, okay. This is one important substance which is used instead of meat. That means uh, what kind of nutrients are available in meat? Almost all those nutrients are available in this uh, substance. That is why we will use this corn as a meat substitute. Actually, this meat substitute, corn is obtained from one important fungus. That fungus name is Fusarium venenatum. Next, uh, some of the fungal species uh, which are used in the preparation of uh, some important varieties of uh, cheeses. What kind of cheeses are obtained from this fungal species? We will see now. I hope all of you know about this green mold or 
blue mold what is called as green mold or blue mold tensilium species called as a green mold or blue mold these molds are extensively used in the industries for the large scale production of some important cheeses here two different types of cheeses are obtained from two different tensilium species one is rocky forti cheese that is obtained from tensilium rocky forti another cheese is camembert cheese this is obtained from tensilium camembert these are the two important nutrient cheeses which are produced by using two species of tensilium these are having great economic value now we will discuss about some other edible products which are produced by using some fungal species what are the edible products which are obtained by using this fungal species means fermented foods these are obtained by a process which is known as fermentation okay one product name is tempeh this product tempeh is prepared by using legume seeds these legume seeds are fermented by using one fungal species so as a result we will obtain this food substance or food item or fermented food that is called as tempeh tempeh is mostly prepared by using legume seeds with the help of rhizopus oligosporous species here in this image you can see tempeh bean balls these are prepared by using legume seeds like that some other fermented product you can see in this image this is another product which is also produced by fermentation process that product name is called as miso this is a product of soya bean paste which will be subjected to fermentation process so as a result this soya bean paste is consists of high amount of nutrients by this fermentation process so this soya bean paste which is used for this fermentation process to produce this edible uh, fungal product that is called as miso here what kind of fungal species we will use to produce this miso means aspergillus oryzae species is used for the production of miso this is another fermented product in addition to tempeh one is tempeh another fermented product is miso these two are produced by using fungal species by fermentation process next we will discuss about the uses of fungi in various industries how these fungal species are used in industries for the production of some uh, important uh, medicines some important cheeses how these are used in baking industry how these fungal species are used in the preparation of some alcoholic beverages we will discuss in a detail manner now okay now we are discussing about uses of fungi in industry why these fungi are used in industry for the large scale production of commercially important products what kind of products are produced on large scale mostly alcoholic beverages are produced commercial and large scale by using this fungal species by fermentation process next breads also produced some important cheeses next proteins vitamins organic acids enzymes medicines antibiotics many items will be produced by using this fungal species by a process known as fermentation so in what way these are used what kind of species we will use to produce various types of substances on large scale first we will discuss about the fungi uses in brewing industry brewing industry means all of you know for the production of beer wine brandy etc we will use some important some fungal species so here most commonly used fungal species is the saccharomyces cerevisiae common name as you all know that that is yeast yeast mostly used in brewing industry brewing industry means one industry which produces this all alcoholic beverages that industry you uh, depends greatly on this yeast for the production of beer and wine on large scale like that some of the fungal species are also used in baking industry also whatever yeast we will use for the production of fungus whatever fungus we will use in the production of brewing or beer or brandy we will use the same fungus 
in the preparation of breads also so saccharomyces cerevisiae are also used in the baking industry for the production of several baking items like bread some uh, some varieties of cakes also so here the important principle lies behind this production of uh, breads and other items means fermentation process here the carbohydrates are fermented by using yeast so as a result ethyl alcohol and carbon dioxide are produced so by the production of this ethyl alcohol and carbon dioxide which helps in a leavening of the batter whatever we will use in the preparation of bread and cakes so in baking industry we will use this fungus next brewing industry also we will use this fungus so same fungus we will use in baking and brewing industry that is a common yeast scientific name is once again i am repeating saccharomyces cerevisiae next in the cheese production also we will use some varieties of fungi what kind of cheeses are produced on large scale by using this fungal species means already we have discussed once that is the rocky forty cheese and camembert cheese these two cheeses are produced by using two penicillium species one is called as penicillium camembert and another another one is called as penicillium rocky fort both are proteolytic and lipolytic enzymes both proteolytic and lipo lipolytic enzymes are produced by the fungus they will helps in cheese ripening and give distinct flavor okay why these cheeses are very tasty means some flavors are produced by the activity of this fungi so they will give some specific flavor as well as they will helps in ripening of that particular cheese so that is possible because of this fungi only here these fungi will produce some enzymes those enzymes are proteolytic enzymes and lipolytic enzymes so these enzymes are produced by these two types of fungal species so they help in cheese ripening as well as they will give some great flavor to those cheeses next we will discuss about another important fungal species which uh, gives a tenderness to the beef that fungus name is tamnidium elegans this is used industrially for the improve for uh, for the improving taste and tenderness of the beef next what kind of fungal species we will use for the production of single cell proteins and several industrially important organic acids production we will discuss one by one here one is some fungal species which are used in the production of single cell proteins on large scale what are the species we will use commonly in the production of this single cell proteins most commonly used fungal species in the production of single cell proteins are saccharomyces cerevisiae in addition to this saccharomyces cerevisiae we will use candida utilis species next candida lipolytica species these are the commonly used fungal species for the production of single cell proteins on large scale in addition to this single cell proteins we will produce some organic acids also on large scale in the industry by using several species of this fungi some industrially important organic acids you will mention here those are citric acid itaconic acid gluconic acid folic acid etc what kind of fungal species we will use to produce this varieties of organic acids we will discuss in a detail way first one citric acid this is citric acid is produced by fermenting sucrose and molasses this sucrose and molasses are fermented by using aspergillus niger species and aspergillus venti species by this fermentation of sucrose and molasses with the help of aspergillus niger and aspergillus venti we will obtain citric acid like that by the fermentation of sugars with the help of aspergillus itaconium and aspergillus terreus we will produce itaconic acid in addition to this itaconic acid and citric acid we will produce gluconic acid cosic acid gallic acid etc with the help of several fungal species what are the fungal species we will use in the production of these acids we will see now gluconic acid this gluconic acid is produced by the fermentation of sugars here what kind of fungal species are used 
for fermentation of these sugars to produce gluconic acid means aspergillus niger and penicillium parthenogenum penicillium parthenogenum and aspergillus niger both are used in the production of gluconic acid on large scale next cosic acid this cosic acid is produced by the fermentation of sugars by using aspergillus porosa species like that gallic acid is produced fumaric acid also produced fumaric acid is produced by the fermentation of sugars here the fungal species used for the production of fumaric acid is rhizopus stolonifer in addition to this fumaric acid we can also produce lactic acid oxalic acid succinic acid here are the commonly used fungal species for the production of lactic acid oxalic acid succinic acid are muca rhizopus etc so here muca and rhizopus are used extensively in the production of lactic acid oxalic acid and succinic acid this is about production of some industrially important organic acids with the help of various species of fungi now we will discuss about some fermented foods which are produced industrially by using fungi already we have discussed about this tempeh we have already discussed next miso also we have discussed so uh, we will move to next one that is soya sauce this soya sauce is obtained by using aspergillus oryza species or aspergillus soya species these two species are used in the industrial production of soya sauce next fungi not only used in the production of some cheeses uh, next alcohols breads uh, not only used in the production of some fermented fruits these fungal species are also used in the production of some important antibiotics what kind of antibiotics we will produce by using this fungal species we will discuss in a detail way penicillium notatum or penicillium chrysogenum these two species are mostly used for the commercial production of antibiotic that is wonder drug which is a common name for penicillin so this penicillin is obtained by using two species of penicillium one is penicillium notatum and another one is penicillium chrysogenum next we can obtain some other useful chemicals also with the help of this fungal species what kind of useful chemicals we will uh, get on large scale with the help of this fungal species means vitamins we will get next glycerols alkaloids hormones etc these all are produced on large scale in the industries with the help of various species of fungi b complex vitamins are produced by using streptomyces species and uh, mycorrhiza species next glycerol glycerol is produced from aspergillus venti species like that some important alkaloids for example ergotamine which is produced from the fungus claviceps purpurea like that some important alkaloids also produced by using this fungal species some important plant hormones all of you know about gibberellins this gibberellin is obtained from the fungus that is called as gibberella fusiforoi like this there is useful chemicals we will produce by using various species of fungi next what kind of fungal species are used in the production of some important enzymes we will see here all of you know that various important enzymes we will produce in the industries for various purposes some important enzymes are invertase dimerase amylase cellulase etc these all are produced on large scale in industries by using different species of fungi invertase enzyme is mostly produced by by the hydrolysis of sugars so saccharomyces cerevisiae is most commonly used for the production of invertase enzyme like that same enzyme we will use for the production and extraction of the zymase enzyme so these these enzymes are produced by a process that is called as fermentation so we will use carbohydrates so these carbohydrates are fermented so as a result we will obtain this commercially important chemical substances like enzymes next some other important enzyme that is called as amylase enzyme 
this is produced by using aspergillus niger and aspergillus varigae species so here this amylase enzyme is used extensively in alcohol industry so we are producing some industrially important enzymes by fermentation process again the same enzymes are used in the production of some other fermented products for example amylase enzyme that is produced by fermentation process with the help of this fungal species again it is used in the production of alcohol by fermentation like that some other enzymes for example cellulase trichoderma resin this and this particular species is used for the production of cellulase enzyme so various types of enzymes are produced by using different species of fungi next some important pigments also produced by this fungal species in this image you can see yellow color pigments this yellow color pigment is produced by penicillium chrysogenum species here this yellow color pigment chrysogen okay that pigment name is chrysogen that is exuded from this fungi which fungi penicillium chrysogenum fungus next some reddish violet color pigment is produced by cercospora kikuchi species okay which color pigment is produced by this cercospora kikuchi species cercospora kikuchi species produces reddish violet color pigment which is called as neocercosporin this reddish purple color or reddish violet color pigment is commonly called as neocercosporin next maroon color pigment is obtained by using aspergillus fumigatus species brown color pigment that brown color pigment name is atromentin which is obtained from paxillus atromentosus next another yellow color pigment which is named as citrinin which is obtained from penicillium citrinin so like that different uh, colored substances which are commonly called as pigments which are produced by using various species of fungi now we will discuss about the production of various important antibiotics by using this fungal species that means how this fungi are used in medicine so some medicinally important products how these are synthesized are produced by using this fungal species we will discuss in a detail way first we will discuss about antibiotics antibiotics means these are the products of one microorganism which are used to inhibit the growth of another microorganism that is called as antibiotic that means here this is one microorganism product which is used to inhibit the growth of another microorganism so that is why that is called as antibiotic so some important antibiotics are produced by using various fungal species what are the antibiotics produced by using various fungal species we will discuss here first antibiotic is penicillin penicillin is produced from penicillium notatum or penicillium chrysogenum this is mostly useful against most of the pathogenic bacteria okay for example tonsillitis tonsillitis is caused by streptococcus phylogenes so because of this bacterial infection tonsillitis will come to suppress that tonsillitis we will use this penicillin antibiotic next to treat pneumonia and to treat chronic bronchitis also we will use this penicillin antibiotic another antibiotic which is called as griseofulvin this griseofulvin antibiotic is produced from penicillium griseofulvum which is used to treat some skin infections scalp infections nail infections feet infections so this is another powerful antibiotic which is commonly known as griseofulvin next cephalosporins these are another group of antibiotics these are produced from the fungus cephalosporium acrimonium species okay cephalosporins are another group of antibiotics which are produced from the fungus cephalosporium acrimonium these are used to treat respiratory tract diseases next is skin infections and urinary tract infections these infections are treated by this cephalosporins next cyclosporin this is also a fungal product mostly this is produced from the fungus tolipocladium inflatum this is widely used as an immunosuppressant that means it will suppress the immune system 
where it will be used extensively means uh, mostly in the transplantation operation so after the transplantation operations uh, to suppress this immune system we will use this uh, cyclosporin antibiotic so the success rate of transplant operations uh, are greatly improved by this uh, immunosuppressant that is called as uh, cyclosporin next another important antibiotic that is called as uh, gliotoxin this is obtained from the aspergillus fumigatus species which helps in the regulation of immune system it is also useful for the post operative management of transplant patients so this is also used extensively in the transplantation operations to operate and regulate the immune system next mevinolin these antibiotics are also called as uh, uh, statins these are produced by fungus aspergillus cereus here this mevinolin group of antibiotics are acts as cholesterol lowering agents so to reduce the cholesterol levels these mevinolins are used extensively next ergot alkaloids these are another group of alkaloids mostly produced by the ergot fungus the ergot fungus name is claviceps purpurea this claviceps purpurea infects rye plant and wheat plant this ergot is the sclerosis madam, of madam madam excuse me yes, madam uh, uh, if you we have, if we want another session also na no? yes sir yes sir okay okay my dear friends uh, please uh, join after uh, two minutes after three minutes uh, it will uh, going to uh, close and then only the same link my dear friends please join madam please proceed okay okay sir okay sir thank you sir so ergot alkaloids are another group of alkaloids these are mostly produced by the fungus claviceps purpurea ergot means here that is a sclerotium sclerotium means one dry and hard substance okay which is made up of some fungal hyphae okay that dry and hard dark color structure is called as sclerotium that is produced by this claviceps purpurea that the claviceps purpurea sclerotium will produce this ergot alkaloids this ergot alkaloids are different types they are named as ergotinin ergotinic acid ergobasin next ergotetrin next lysergic acid diethyl amide these are some important ergot alkaloids we will discuss about the uh, different ergot alkaloids in a detailed way now lysergic acid diethyl amide is Hal uh, hallucinogen mostly it is used uh, to treat some important uh, uh, anxiety cases next ergonovine this is another er uh, ergot alkaloid mostly it is used to speed up the labor pains and prevent postpartum bleeding next ergotamine is another powerful antibiotic this is uh, used as a vasoconstrictor which constricts the blood vessels and thus blood flow useful in migraine okay next ergotism ergotism means uh, the effect of long term ergot poisoning due to the ingestion of alkaloids produced by the fungus claviceps purpurea in humans that is called as uh, ergotism so ergotism may cause uh, strange hallucinations the feeling of itchy sensation burning skin next gangrene formation these are some of the important symptoms of ergotism that is a one kind of poisoning which is caused by this ergot alkaloids long term uses may lead to this kind of condition so this ergotism may cause us strange hallucinations next feel of itchy nature next burning skin gangrene formation also may takes place so Finally, this ergotism leads to death of that particular person. This is about okay. ergot okay. alkaloids. Okay, madam. Okay, madam. Uh, okay. The sessions will go into okay. close. Please, all of you, my okay. dear friends, please join through same link.